When I decided to ask my wife to marry me, I didn't go around asking people, should I marry this girl? I didn't go around going, what if we get divorced? What if we're not a good fit? You do it. You make the decision. Because the reason you're having thoughts about this is because you're not happy with where you are. Get up and change it. Life doesn't have a remote. You have to get up and make and change it. Like, I need to change. I don't know exactly what that change is, but I need to change. Yes. And that's the moment we're talking and, about. And that's that moment right there. Those moments are going to be fleeting. And it's going to nag you until you make a move. How many times have you been watching late night TV, see something being advertised, and you're like, oh, snap, I thought about something, doing something like that years ago. And here's somebody making billions off of it. But every time you think about doing something, just know that you're not the only person thinking about it. Welcome to the Fitness CEO Podcast. Hey friends, welcome back to another amazing episode. Before I introduce today's guest, I want to give you a friendly right to like this video if you get value that will help us continue producing this content for you for free. And today, to introduce today's guest, a dear friend of mine, someone who I have so much respect and admiration for, he's an immigrant edge story, came from Jamaica to the States, built his career, uh, handled so much adversity and objections to get where he's at today. He's a multi-location owner within Fit Body Bootcamp, uh, one of our most successful owners in the brand. I want to welcome to today, today's show, Mr. Uriel Baker. My man, Uriel Baker, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Oh, well, excited to unpack this today, man. Uh, you're a dear friend, been one of our most successful owners in the brand in a short period of time. Now, new multi-location owner, which I just, you know, introduced you for. So just a lot of exciting things. I want to welcome you to the show. And really, to kick us off, I uh, want to give a little backstory. So you like, could just tell us how this all started. Sure. Um, so I... Uh, Believe it or not, I don't know, don't let the accent fool you. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm originally from the Caribbean. I'm Jamaican. And uh, moved here when I was 24. So I moved here in 1998 to good old New Jersey. So Jamaica to New Jersey. I don't know if that's a good transition, but it worked. And, uh, you know, grew up in the Caribbean, spent most of my career, as a matter of fact, straight out of college in hospitality. Did you go to school in uh, college in Jamaica? I went to college in Jamaica. Okay. Went to high school and college. Um, loved my college years. Uh, I remember at age 14, pulling up in front of, back then it was the Americana Hotel. Okay. I don't know if any Jamaicans listening to your podcast or, you know. Showing over, some Jamaica over, some love out over, there. Over a certain age to know what the Americana Hotel okay. was. <laughs> but then it became the Jamaica Grand and then it's now the Moon Palace in Ocho Rios. And I remember we were on a school field trip and it pulled up in front of that hotel. And at age 14, I looked at that hotel and I went, this is what I want to do when I grow up. And so my entire career, college, hospitality and tourism management, then um, straight out of college, I started working for good old Sandals Resorts. And I was one of those kids, I don't know if you've ever been to one of those Caribbean resorts, have, yeah, yeah. where you see all the kids on the microphones come on, hey, yep. everybody get into the pool. That was me. That's you. That was me. <laughs> At 6'4", I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I had 180 pounds dripping wet. I was so skinny. <laughs> right? um, but I loved it. I loved it. Did that for about six years. Then, um, you know, my mom left Jamaica when my, my, my sister and I were very, very young. You know, um, you know, this is one of, those, one of those stories that when I tell, you know, just, just shows my appreciation for her. You know, I, I did grow up with a single mom. And, you know, she decided, you know, she wanted a better life for her kids. Just a sacrifice. Just a sacrifice. You know, she had a great life in Jamaica, I'm not going to lie. You know, but she decided, hey, I want my children to have a better life. Mm -hmm. So she emigrated. Um, again, I was probably 13 or uh, 14 or 15 years old. And my sister, who's two years younger than me, you know, so we were, we were young kids. Yeah, and so yeah. she moved here. And, uh, you know, back then, you know, we had telephones and we had good old airmail letters yeah, yeah. so you'd send a letter and you know you get a response i don't know two weeks later <laughs> right <laughs> um and so for a very long time that's how we communicated and then i think we finally saw my mom again in uh 95 or 96 that's nearly so, 10 years yeah You're so it was it was a while yeah, yeah. it was a while you know while she was living in new jersey you know trying to do everything she can to you know make life better for us yeah, yeah. and then we finally um you know became green card holders and moved here in 1998 congrats um, man by the so, way real quick we just need more people like you in this country hard working thanks. salt of the earth thanks i'm so great grateful that you made the journey thanks yeah. continue on <laughs> and uh you know so 
as as uh, you know, if, if you haven't noticed yet, you know, I'm a mama's boy. I'm all about my mom, you know. And so we moved here, my sister and I, and we kind of made a pact together that you know one of the first things we want to do is help her mom get her her first home. You know, and so, you know, worked her tails off. Kudos to my sister, man. She, she's, she's a little bit different than I in, the, in that I am one of those people who I don't need formal anything. If I want something, I'm going for it. You know, she is, she plays by the, rule, by the rules. She, college, college, college. I joke all the time. I think my sister has more degrees than a thermometer. Oh. Right. Yeah. She she has. Yeah. She's Educated. just one of those people. Yeah. You know, we've lived in the U.S. 25 years. She's been at the same job for 24. Oh, wow. Right. Um, and she's just she's just amazing. You know, so we, we worked hard together, built her mom, our mom, her first home. Right. And uh, she we moved her from New Jersey to Pennsylvania. And she, they're still there right to this day. Good on you. Um, and grandma's house is is now where my kids, I think they prefer grandma's house to mine, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, they spend the entire summer with grandma. And, you know, it's it's a negotiating process to get them back. Oh, nice. So typically, if we're going to pick them up, if we plan on picking them up, say, the last week in July, mm-hmm. I have to tell my mom that we're coming to get them the first week in July because that gives me four weeks of negotiating. Oh, how fun. Right? Yeah. So literally, when it comes time to go pick them up, my mom stops talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so, you know, each week it has to be, hey, mom, coming to get them. And she goes, well, you know, in the strongest Jamaican accent ever, <laughs> well, URL. You can't let me have my grandkids for one more week, you know, kind of thing. So <laughs> no guilt trip or anything, <laughs> and, you know, no pressure or anything. But no, but but you know, what what her sacrifice instilled in us though is that sense of hard work, yeah, and 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 focusing on a goal and sticking to that goal regardless of of what else comes your way, right? Could could she have just gone? You know what? I, this is hard. Again, you're moving from Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Where it averages, I don't know, 85 degrees, 90 degrees all year round to freaking New Jersey, Jersey man. Baby. Holy <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, and she did every job under the sun, you know, to, 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 to get us a better life. So that kind of instilled in us from day one, you know, hey, if she can do it, who am I? Who am I to complain about obstacles? Who am I to not want to set goals and, 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 and go after them, Right. Um, and so, yeah, I jumped headfirst into the hospitality industry. And real quick, what attracted you about it? And I'll take a TV timeout just to showcase some some of what I believe, zones right. of genius, Uriel. And we'll talk about that today. But you're just a very charismatic, people-oriented guy. So you light up when people in the room. So my guess is that had something to do with it. But I don't also want to lead the witness. What attracted you to the customer service, the hospitality industry? And then we'll talk about what attracted you to Fitbody. That's a great question. So, you know, one of the things that I, that I admitted with growing up in Jamaica is, <laughs> believe it or not, I grew up in the church. Right, and 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 this is going to have me talk now about my other mom, my aunt, who who recently pa- passed, and one of the things that you know that, that I joke about a lot, and if, if you were to watch the video of my wedding, my best man spoke about it. You know, he spoke about the fact that I probably hate going to church now because growing up I was in the church seven days a week. Mm-hmm. Right, I'd go to church on Sunday morning for Sunday school, then main church Sunday, you know, the rest of the Sunday, and then Monday night there was something, Tuesday night there was something. So I was literally in the church seven days a week, and a lot of the things that I do now are owed to that. You know, my ability to get up in front of a huge audience and not feel any form of stage fright or anything came from that. You know, I, I, I sang with the youth choir. I just, as a kid, I sang with the senior choir. You know, I had to practice public speaking, stuff like that. Um, and even my ability to lead came out of that. And even my ability to work with people and, and, and care about people came from that. Um, so from a very, very young age, you know, I, I'd say from as early as I could speak, it was, it was school, church, and volleyball. That's it. Right, and so you know, growing up with with those people mm-hmm. um, in my life, you know, I, I just learned from a very early age. You know, you're never better than anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody has a story. Everybody could use help. You never know someone else's story. Don't assume. 
That's so powerful. Right. And I think for me, it's interesting. I mean, you know, being in the fitness space where we talk and we, you know, uh, educate our franchise partners, our coaches, first and foremost, we're in the people business yes. more than we are in the fitness yes. business. And when you can connect with people, we can love on people, we can lead people. When exactly. You can, I mean, that makes all the difference in the world. It does. So the fact that you have that foundation, and I also believe there's a lot of factory installed in it well, just knowing who you are, but you know, from that factory installation, having that experience, it just makes a lot of sense that you'd gravitate to people and yes. have very successful careers in two, I guess, on the surface, different industries. But really, if you look at it at the core, it's it the is people. Still, yep, yeah. it is still a people business. Yep. That's, that's all it is, you know. Um, and, I, and I think that that's what made the transition so, so much easier for me, you know, transitioning from hospitality into a fit, into a fit body boot camp mm-hmm. owner, you know. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it is still people who are trusting that you're going to get them what you, you promised, mm-hmm. right? Whether it is a king bed with, 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 with extra pillows mm-hmm. or you're going to lose you know, 20 pounds of fat if you mm-hmm. stick with the plan. It's the same thing, right? We're, we're, still, prom- we're still following up and, and following through on a promise that we made. You know, the only difference is, yeah, you're going to be sweating more in one of those situations, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, on, on a day-to-day, on a daily basis, I have interactions that mirror what I did for 30 years in the hospitality industry. You know, it's somebody at your front desk talking about something that they're either not happy with, mm-hmm. want help with, want guide with. Mm-hmm. Um, again, the only difference is one is more relaxing because you're sleeping in a bed, mm-hmm. and the other one, you know, we're kicking your tail. Yep. You know, um, so it's, it's really... Like you said, it's a people business, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and one of the things that you know, my man CJ, shout out to my man CJ, I love that guy. Love you, CJ. I love that guy, man. You know, one of the things that he said in um, in our elite training in, in in Rhode Island that sticks with me um, and has stuck with me, and I've shared with my team is, and I've shared with Abby. If you're coming into this and your main focus is to make money, you're going to be disappointed. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, the money is going to come. The money is definitely going to come, and we'll talk more about this later. Um, you know, if, if if you want us to dive into that, but if your main focus is not helping people, you're in the wrong business. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and and one of the things that you know my team and I talk about, and you know, and, and some of them even mentioned, um, you know, when I when I asked them to talk about strengths and weaknesses, you know, we have members who we literally just treat like well, all of our members we treat like family yeah. but we have members who will come to us with their stories and we're like hey your health and fitness is more important to me than whatever you're paying me per week so we're gonna we're gonna work around that yeah. for now yeah. if you know event like i said eventually the money will come and we've 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 had some amazing relationships with some amazing loyal members because of some of those sacrifices and i, I don't call them sacrifices some of these investments that we've made you know in in Focusing on the person rather than the account, um, and and it's 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 worked out to be beneficial to us. Oh, I can only imagine. All right. Well, I want to unpack. You know, we talked a little bit about the background, and then now kind of tailing into fit, fit body ownership. Let's talk about that transition. Like, what was the aha? You know, you have a wife, and you have a couple kids, and you're very successful for three decades. Mm-hmm. You know, in the customer service hospitality business. Like, what was it for you that were like, hey, I need to make a change? And then also too, like, talk through all the challenges, anxieties right. of what that is, especially you know having a family. Right. Right. So I have three main reasons why we decided to go with a body boot camp or to, to make the switch, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, the first one was my own health. Uh, again, for my entire life, for most of my entire life, I've been in great shape. I've been, you know, again, volleyball, volleyball track, yeah. soccer, the whole night, right? Um, but with working in hospitality as a hotel GM, if you have the ability to, you move around a lot. Case in point. So I've lived in the U.S. for 25 years, right? Cincinnati is my 12th city to live in. 12th. 12th. I've literally moved about an average every two years. We've, we've moved cities. And now that you say this, I do know, and I'm not overly familiar with the industry, but that's it's typically pretty standard. common. It's Why pretty, is that? Because that's the easiest way to get your promotions, right? Um, if you stay in the same city, you'll probably stay at your same hotel. I, I know GMs who have been at their hotels for 10 years, 15 years, you know, but if you have the ability to move and transfer and relocate, that's how you climb that ladder faster. 
Right. Because then you don't necessarily have to do a lateral shift whenever you're shifting over. Exactly. Your, yeah. Exactly. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, 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 you're making a, a, an upward movement in terms of position. Okay. You're moving up in terms of the size of the property. So let's say, oh, sure. you know, while I'm in Connecticut, I'm managing a 150 room hotel. And then there's an opening, there's an opportunity in Columbus, Ohio for a 400 room property. You're still going there as a hotel general manager. It, however, it's a bigger property. Bigger so more responsibilities, bigger salaries, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So because of that, and you know, at the time, you know, I was I was single. So I could do this, right? Um, and so that was great. But with that comes other things. You know, you're you know, more times than not, when you move to a new city, you're gonna live in the hotel probably six months. So you're eating hotel food, you know, you're, you're going from work to your bed, you know, there's no activity. So over time, your health and, and fitness starts suffering. Sure. Right. And so I remember I ballooned up to about 292 pounds. I was a big dude. Ooh. Right. Um, and I remember, forget what she was doing. You know, my, my older child was Three year olds, three year olds at the time. This was in 2019, and I went to chase after her, and she ran around the house, and I'm running behind her, and I literally had to stop because my heart rate picked up so, and I was like short winded. I was like, "This doesn't feel right." Oh yeah, it's not supposed to feel like this, you know. At the time, yeah, I was I was in my 40s, but still, still, yeah. So I, you know, I went to the doctor, and um, he just the hits just kept coming, man. High blood pressure, overweight, um, you know, high cholesterol. Pre-diabetic. When I heard pre-diabetic, I was like, "Hold on, stop," because mm -hmm. my family has a history of diabetes on my father's side. Like I have a lot of family members who are, you know, a, a, a limb amputated or something like that because of diabetes. And so when I heard that, you know, that's when I was like, "Uh-uh, I this this needs to get fixed." So you know, he wanted me to start taking medications and all, and I was like, "Doc." I'm from the third world. You know, where I'm from, you know, I go to my grandma and says something hurts and she goes, hold on, let me go to the back of the yard and rub up some bush and bring back to you. <laughs> you know, I'm not taking any medication, right? And um, he's like, listen, you, you have to, you know? So I said, I'll make a deal with you. You know, give me six months. You know, I want to try and fix this. You said this to your doctor? I said this to my doctor. Good on you, man. Yeah. He said, I said, give me six months. I want to try and fix this with nutrition and exercise. And he says, you know, he fought back for a little bit. And then he goes, all right, let's see. And, you know, he laughed because, you know, you'll be back. You'll be back yeah, for yeah, drugs. Because yeah. um, you got to think how many times he sees this. Exactly. You got to think the obesity epidemic in our country is 50%. Exactly. So he's just looking for yeah, like, probability. Yeah, he'll be back. Yeah. He'll be back. You know, it's almost like telling your drug dealer, hey, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gone clean now. And he's like, yeah, sure. you'll be back. They all come back kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know, so that's when my, my, I started my journey. Right? And I was like, listen, I need to fix me, you know, and, and this transitions in, into, into my other why, you know, my biggest why really are my children. And, and you're going to hear me talk about those two girls ad nauseum. So if you get tired of hearing it, sorry, my man, right? Yeah. Um, those two, and, and the reason is because I didn't have an, an, an involved dad in my life. So I need to break that cycle. Right, so my two girls are literally the most important people to me, and 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 for me, <clears throat> it had been hard f to put myself in a position where I can't be there for them because of failing health. Sure, right, it's the foundation. Exactly. If you can't run around and play with your, you know, three yeah. year old. Yeah. Why did I go and make them? Yeah. If, if I'm if I made you, I need to be here for you. Totally. That, that's just, that's just you know the way I see it, and so. I started and I started looking, you know, so I went back to the gym, I started lifting again and so on. But again, by now I'm 43, you know, I'm in a gym with 20 odd year olds, you know, benching 405s and, and you know, in your mind as a guy, mm -hmm. you're like, I used to be able to do this. I'm going to try it. You know, I can still do it. And I end up tearing my rotator cuff, you know? So I was like, oh my gosh, I can't win, you know? Um, but I still needed to find an, an answer. So I had my surgery. You know, I was still out of shape, overweight, you know, and all the doctors knocking, like, come on, dude, we need to fix you. And I'm like, just just give me a little bit more time. And fix you meaning by prescription yeah, medication. Yeah. Drugs. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's how we fix you know, that's yeah. that's how we get fixed in the Western yeah. world. Right. Um, and so, you know, recovered from my surgery. By by this time I'm now moving. So I moved from Columbus, Ohio now to Cincinnati, Ohio, because I'm taking over a new hotel. And I started thinking, there's got to be another way. So I started researching, 
and I joined another group fitness company. I'm not going to call the name. Sure. And, um, you know, was working out, was liking the group dynamics. However, you know, as an ex-volleyball player, my, my knees aren't the best. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that that gym does is a lot of treadmill workouts. And I was like, I, I, I can't do this. So, especially when you got up to 294, exactly. Right? That's a lot of weight to be carrying, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I started searching again, and then in the midst of that, you know, um, we decided to host our, our Jamaican family for Christmas of 2020, 2021. So, it was right after the pandemic, and um, we flew everybody up. You know, we're having a blast. You know, we're a bunch of Jamaicans yeah. in Cincinnati oh, yeah. for Christmas, oh, yeah. cold oh, weather. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> look the whole out night. Now. Look out! And and I remember this one night, two nights before Christmas, we're in the basement, and man, we're partying. We're going in. We're going in like real Jamaican style. And my phone rings at two o'clock in the morning. And it's my hotel. And as a hotel general manager, you're on call twenty four hours a oh, day. Oh snap! Yeah. My hotel calls, and there's a power outage at the hotel. And I'm in my basement, and I go, I'll be there. Again, I'm in my basement. I was drinking, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm in the in the Midwest. I get my cousin, my you know my my closest cousin. He was here from Jamaica with his wife as well. I said, hey, let's drive down to the hotel. The hotel is about 20 minutes away. Now, for fear of getting political, because that's not you know that's not my mo here. Is you know <clears throat> two black guys in a Range Rover. In Cincinnati at 2 o'clock in the morning with alcohol in their system, that's a recipe for disaster, yeah. right? We get pulled over. We're not home for Christmas. I'm just letting you know. So I'm driving to the hotel, and that's when I had my aha moment. I'm driving to the hotel, and I, I turn to my cousin, and I go, I can't do this anymore. In the moment? In the moment. I said, I, I, I can't do this anymore. And he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I'll explain to you later. But in my head, I'm going... I'm here with some of my family that I haven't seen in years. I'm having a blast mm-hmm. to the point where, because I, I don't really drink, mm-hmm. right? To the point where I'm comfortable enough to throw a couple back. And right in the midst of that, right in the midst of me spending quality time with the people that matter to me most, I have to leave to go take care of my job. Mm-hmm. I can't do this anymore. So that was December of 21, January 22, I quit. Whew. Right? And again, you know, I skipped all the part that, you know, September 21 is, is when I, I found Fit Body Bootcamp and started doing the research. research yeah, yeah. And Max and I started chatting and whatnot. Um, so even before we decided, you know, Fit Body Bootcamp is going to be it, I was just like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm-hmm. So that was my number, my number two why. Time. I wanted to buy back my time. I need to buy back my time. Right? And, and this will transition, you know, into the end when we're talking about, you know, things that are important to you or some of the best advice you've gotten, yep. you know? And I, I, I posted, and you know, I know you follow me on Facebook, but I posted this recently on Facebook, you know, you know this guy at, um, at one of the Shark Tank interviews, you know, where he was talking about, you can always make money. You can always make time. And, and that's, that is my number two why. All right? My health was number one. My, my, my time was number two. And my number three was my children. And my children and my wife, I want to be able to spend as much time with them as possible. And, you know, I had this experience with, with Barrett. I'm not sure if he, exp- if he told you. Back in February when we came out here for the Mastermind Retreat, um, I had booked my flight and hotel for the entire week. And about a week before we came out, my wife says to me, hey, guess what we forgot? I was like, what? She's like, next Friday is your first father-daughter dance with Hayden. So I was like, I didn't even think twice. I was like, oh, sh- I'm changing my flight. Mm-hmm. So I was supposed to fly back home Saturday evening after the, the retreat finished. And I just changed my flight to fly back on Thursday. And I messaged Barrett and I was like, hey, is there a way that you'll be, you'll be you know, Zooming or streaming the last two days of the, of the, the retreat? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't think we had planned on doing it. So I said, hey, just so you know, I had to change my flight. I just realized that, you know, my number one why, I have a father-daughter dance with her Friday night. I'm not missing that. And he, he was like, man, I got nothing but respect for you and so on and so forth, right? Totally. You know, and I went, you know, flew back Thursday, 
you know, I had matching, my tie matched her dress and, you know, we, we rolled in and everybody was looking at us <laughs> like, look at those two. What's crazy is we get in there, she hands me her water bottle and I don't see her for the rest of the night because she's hanging out with her friends. friends yeah. But I'm willing to sacrifice for that, right? So those are my three reasons. And those are the three things that pushed me to start this journey with Fit Body Bootcamp. And I got to tell you, you know, at almost a year in, everything that I, that I dreamed of and everything that I envisioned and everything that I had hoped would happen in terms of my health, in terms of spending time with my loved ones, and in terms of, in terms of spending time with my kids are happening. You know, I, I went back January of this year, for my February of this year for my follow-up with my doctor. Down almost 40 pounds, ah. right? Heart, my heart rate, I, I think I posted it on Facebook. I think my, my blood pressure was 120 over 60. He hasn't been that in, I don't know, forever. All right, my A1C levels are in the low fives. And he's looking, I mean, he had me up on, his, on the table. I didn't even know this, but if you're, if you're a diabetic, you start losing feeling in the bottom of your feet. Oh, yeah. Did not know that. Yeah, yeah. So he has me up, and he's like, dragging stuff on the bottom. I'm like, dude, you're tickling me. And he's like, okay, you're good. He's like running all these tests to prove that, you know, this is indeed happening. Yeah, you're, you're back on track. I'm back on track, you know. Um, but it's just, it, you know, it, it, it just walking away from my career just opened up all of that for me, you know. And, and it, it doesn't get better. This, this is it for me. I, I, honestly, this is it for me. So, you know, we knew coming in, you know, we wanted to get one location mm -hmm. to start. Mm -hmm. um, again, yes, there is the financial aspect to it, you know, because, you know, we also, again, my wife, everything has to be on paper. And, and so to, to make, for it to make financial sense, you know, we do need to, we, we did need to open multiple locations. So we knew from day one that we were going to be opening mul multiple locations. It wasn't a matter of if we were going to, it's a matter of when. Right, and so we're we're going full force, man, you know. And the biggest part of it, and she will talk more about this, you know, when 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 she talks to people, is the connections and friendships that we made on this journey, both with other partners and with members, right? You know, it's it's people coming in and literally, you know, I, I my office, I call it the whaling room. You know, my, 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 my integrator and I, we have, we have, you know, affectionately called it the whaling room. You're, I mean, I, I know this inherently just being in the business, but you're going to have to explain to our yeah. audience why. So the whaling room is, um, so admittedly, I don't do a lot of strategy sessions anymore for that reason. Um, and I can always tell when somebody's coming out of the office and just did a strategy session. Because they're either coming out with a tissue in their hand, mm -hmm. or my facility integrator is walking out hugging them, mm -hmm. or something. But that door stays closed, and it's literally every time someone sits in that room, there is going to be tears. It's just, it just, it just happens. Standard. It's just standard, right? But it's not even. I don't even say it to be funny. I say it because people feel so comfortable that they can be vulnerable with you in that room. And they feel confident that not only are you going to come out and spread it to the entire world, but they're going to, they're going to help you get over whatever these challenges are, right? And, and I'm, I've literally moved out of my office because I don't, I don't need to be in there now. It is the whaling room, and, and that's, what we, that's what it's going to be used for, you know? And, and it's just, just the connection, you know, that, that we made with members, man. It's, it's worth every sleepless night that I've had thinking because yeah in the beginning oh yeah it's a lift oh my gosh it's are you lift. kidding me yeah in the beginning I remember looking at not not my wife knows this because again you know and this is another thing we can talk about as guys you know we feel like society makes it that we have to internalize a lot of stuff right we're not allowed to be vulnerable we're not allowed to show her we're not you know so there's a lot of nights that I'm up at two o'clock in the morning, my wife's sleeping, and I'm sitting downstairs going, and I'm probably looking at a pay stub or something going, I'm, I'm walking away from this. Just the opportunity that you yeah. had. Yeah, I'm walking away from this yeah. to go start a business that has no guarantee. Yeah, 
yeah. There's no. absolutely no guarantee. No, no, not at all. Right? And, and I'm looking at, you know, all the things that I've, I've said I've wanted to do with my kids, all these trips that I want to go on and all these places I want to take them. Because, again, we, we're not believers. We're no longer believers in gifts. We don't, we don't want to spend a lot of money in gifts. We want to spend money on experiences. experiences. So we do a lot of travel. Right. And so I'm looking at all these things that I want to do and I'm going, well, I won't be able to afford this if I'm walking away from my from my hospitality salary. And, you know, here comes a business that and we're looking. I'm looking at the budget. I'm saying, OK, we're looking to start breaking even nine months in. So if we're opening August 1st, we're not making a profit till May of the next year. This can't work. And I that literally there was everything in my head was like. This isn't going to work. But, you know, I, I was watching one of Bedros's, um broadcasts with you when he was talking about the two guys in your head, right? Mm -hmm. And so I had to start tapping into that other guy, the supportive guy that's going, listen, man, you can do this, you dude. This. You got this. You got this. Like, look how many, you know, one of the things I specialized in as a hotel GM was, and part of why I moved as much was I, I was the GM who specialized in taking hotels that are struggling not being um, profitable, can retain um, staff. Ho the actual infrastructure is in shambles turn it and turn them around. So from, from the majority of my career, that's what I did. So that guy now had to start telling me, dude, do you remember such and such hotel? You remember that shit show? <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you got it. Exactly. You, know? you went in there. Yeah. You, did the, you, you went in there. You did it. You know, you were doing this for somebody else. Why can't you do it for yourself? Totally. Right? And so I needed to now start telling myself, all right, we can do this. We can do this. And I remember the first month we broke even. So we opened August of 2022. We broke even October 2022. Two months in. <laughs> Two freaking months That's in. Wild. And I called Abby and I was like, are you seeing this? You know, and, and she didn't understand why I was already excited because I wasn't one that was having internal battles. I wasn't one that was telling myself, dude, we're not going to break even until May of next year. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't even afford your car payment. And now, now two months in, we're looking around going, holy crap, this is awesome. You're there. You know, so, you know, I know I gave you an airful there, but uh, yeah. That's what I wanted, my friend. That's yeah. why we're here. All right. I want to uh, transition a little bit into what I believe are some zones of genius that have really enabled you to be successful, and you know, both in your hospitality career, but then transitioning. And one, just qualities that I know to be true about you, but then we did some preparation and pulled some yeah. you know, content uh, from your team as well. So um, some of the feedback that I see, but also too, like was given by your team is you are an incredibly strong visionary and you have just great warm energy. So, you know, from your perspective, uh, how do you think that has uh, enabled your ability to lead and really be successful within, you know, both industries, but specifically fit right. body in the gym industry? So the, the great thing about, well, I went, so there's two things about having vision, right? Um, it is one thing to be able to go, man. I could see myself here, or I could see myself doing this, and I could see myself, you know, owning this and whatnot. But it, it's nothing without action. It's absolutely nothing without action. And so, yes, you know, are there a lot of dreamers in the world? Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of people who if you, you could sit down and have drinks with your mm -hmm. friends, and they'll they'll tell you all the things that they want to do. And it doesn't have to be, you know, again, coming from a humble background. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always, and more times than not, it doesn't have to be about money, right? You know, having great vision doesn't always mean, all right, I want to have a private jet and a private yacht and, what, and all that stuff. You know, having great vision is, is, could be as simple as, you know, for example, two years ago, my, you know, my one cousin, my closest cousin I was talking about, he, um, he and his wife hosted my aunt and uncle for Christmas in Jamaica. And I saw that and I was like, you know what? I need to pay it forward. I need to invite them to come spend Christmas with us. That was just me having a vision. I don't know it was going to happen. I don't know how it was going to happen. I just knew that it would be nice to do that. Just to say, just kind of like to say thank you. What you do with that vision now is what's important. And that's the delta you're talking about. Exactly. Anybody can whip up the exactly. idea. Exactly. Anybody can whip up the idea. Anybody can whip up what's the idea. That follow up and it's execution. what's a follow up and execution going to yeah. be, right? And it, it's, it's, it's completely up to you. I don't have all the answers. So what I do is I surround myself with people who do, right? You'll hear me talk a lot about my facility integrator, right? 
she actually used to be my coach at that old gym that I was talking about, that old group gym that I that I went to. Mm-hmm. And when when the idea of purchasing Fit Body Bootcamp came to light, yeah, I I knew even though I was walking away from my career, I knew I couldn't run the gym. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to know that you can't do it, right? But it's also important that you find somebody who can. So I reached out to her, and as a matter of fact, we weren't we weren't even we weren't even friends. We didn't know each other like that. You know, I searched her on Facebook and I messaged her on Facebook, and it's funny. Um, I said, "Hey, Coach, um, it's Uriel. You know, I, I come to your sessions. You know, I, I, I'd like to talk to you about something." Um, and her response to me was, "Oh, that sounds great, but before I answer, tell me again how we met." Because you know, she wanted to make sure that it was a spam. Oh yeah. Or or or, or, or you know, <laughs> yeah. so I, I you know I had to reply going, "You coached me." At, you know, so I was like, "Oh, okay, got it." And then, and then okay, got it. And so she she just took my number and she called me. And I, I sat with her and I, I shared my vision with her. I said, all right, so here's the deal. You know, I'm walking away from my career. You know, I'm getting ready to purchase this franchise. It's brand new to Cincinnati. You know, I'll send you the link um, for, the, for the, the, the franchise so you can take a look at it and whatnot. But this is what I have in mind, right? My goal is to have four of these in Cincinnati in the next five years. My goal is to grow this brand. Mm-hmm. My wife, Abby, will take care of the, the, the accounting and finance side. However, I need somebody to run the day-to-day operation. Mm-hmm. Like, I know I can grow this. I know that I can help. I can do the marketing. I know, you know, but the operations is not my forte. Mm-hmm. Like right? the coaching. Like yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the coaching, the, 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 the scheduling of yeah. coaches, you know, stuff like that. Um, and she goes, you know, it sounds great, but let me talk to my husband and I'll get back to you. Right. And a day later, she calls me back and she's like, I'm in. All right. No, I think there's a huge valuable point here. So yeah. I want to unpack that. Uh-huh. What do you think? And you probably know from follow up conversations, like what attracted her to the opportunity? Because there's gold in that that I want to make sure that our audience knows. Because I, I made it clear that I was bringing her on as a partner, not as an employee. Right. I, 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 I clearly laid out what I thought her scope of experience and her scope of knowledge and how that could help the, the trio, mm-hmm. right? So it was me, her, and Abby, right? It wasn't her coming in to work for me and Abby, even though essentially that's what it is, mm-hmm. right? And, 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 and it's funny because as, as an eagle, that's one of the things that I've had to, to, to kind of reel back myself on a lot of times, you know, remembering that, hey, I brought her on as a partner, Mm -hmm. right? There's certain decisions that I'm going to have to make her make. And I'm going to have to support them regardless of whether or not I agree with them, Mm -hmm. right? So it was, it was, it was, and it's the same thing I did in hospitality, right? And, you know, one of the, the, the the weekly call that I'm on with the, with the East Coast um, owners, this is one of the things we talk about a lot, empowering your people. Oh, yeah. Making them feel like they're part of the team rather than just an employee. Because when they have buy-in, then people support what they create. Exactly. And, and Uriel, you've done an incredible job just from a leadership perspective, from a visionary perspective, laying down the parameters. Yep. And then when you get buy-in from your integrator or coaches, then they support more what they create. Exactly. The execu- to your point, the execution is really what matters. And exactly. The roof. Exactly. Right. And, and and so basically, that's that's how I I I, I attack. You know, being a visionary in all aspects of my life, even with my children. You know, I'll say to them, "All right, girls. You know, like in in February we went on a on a, on a cruise to the Bahamas, and I, I say to them, "All right, we're going on this cruise to the Bahamas. What do you want to do? Because I could sit here and say this we're going to do this this this, 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 and this, and this. No, but you're the ones that are going to come back and tell your friends about this thing that you did." Mm-hmm. I want to know what you want to. Granted, they're seven and four. They probably don't know a lot. Yeah. But I still, I still want them to feel like they are a part of planning this vacation. They're gonna be more committed. They're gonna be more, they, you know, enjoy it more. Exactly. And the opposite, if you just plan the itinerary without mm-hmm. consulting. You now, granted, we're talking about four to seven year yeah. girls, but the analogy reigns true, like in your business as well. They're gonna fight. They're gonna resist when things don't go to plan. They're exactly. Come back and like, Dad, I told you. Exactly. Where when you under do the opposite, you set the, you know, the the guidelines, the vision. Exactly. But then you empower your people inward, then they're going to be more ambitious and excited to take exactly. action. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. Energy. 
Uh, that was another you know mm-hmm. characteristic that comes up. And man, you just have warm energy. The first time I met you, and we were talking off script. I'm actually gonna teach for a second here. When mm-hmm. I met you, your warmness energy, like you can tell, you're very charismatic. You just have a way with people. In addition to that, we talked about at our you know, on-site experience welcoming dinner, you had 30 years of experience in hospitality, so I knew you got the people business. Right. And then one thing that you said, I'll never forget, and we even talked about this off camera, you said, Bryce, you know, I have this experience, but I'm coming in as a white belt mentality with a sponge. I want to soak it all up. And honestly, like I turned to my team after, I'm like, this guy is going to dominate and that's what you've done. So bring this back, though, from an energy perspective. How do you think you know your energy has helped impact your location, your clients, your members, your team? And maybe you know what are some you know things that you do to increase your energy for you know our audience? A good takeaway. First of all, I, I learned from a very early age um, that again, I'm six four. Well, at the time I was two hundred ninety two pounds. I'm six four. 292 pounds, bald-headed black guy, especially in the summer. I'm like this black, right? <laughs> <laughs> with, with a beautiful accent to boot. <laughs> so if I'm just standing there and I'm not smiling, I'm a scary-looking dude. Right? <laughs> so, 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 so right off the bat, I, I knew that whether I wanted to or not, I have to smile. Yeah. If, if I don't smile, I'm going to scare the living snot out of people. Totally. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so so that, 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 you know, that I, I learned over time as I, as I got older. However, you know, is some of it factory installed? Yes. However, you are a product of, of your upbringing. Yeah. You are. Yeah. You are. And, you know, and, and, and I've just always grown up around with among some of the warmest people you'll ever meet. Again, you know, vacationing in Jamaica is kind of, yes, it is a little commercialized. However, if you ever get a chance to really interact with, like, the real Jamaicans, you know, I'm not talking about the ones that you see on TV. Uh, okay, they're great. Yeah. But, you know, like, the, the real, authentic, like, like, real yeah. authentic. I'm, I'm from the country. I'm from the south coast of Jamaica. Most people... It, never will see that. Never see the south coast yeah, of Jamaica, yeah. right? Because it's 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 farming towns, fishing villages. You know, everybody's just warm. You know, I I remember when I got married. Cause Abby and I we got married in Jamaica. We had three hundred people at our wedding, right? It wasn't it wasn't even split because Abby's originally from Ohio, so we had about a hundred. 150 people from the U.S., yep. um, and, and then the rest were from Jamaica. And again, these are all people who have never met these Ohioans before. Mm-hmm. And you would never understand, you would never know that if you were at this wedding reception because everybody's just welcoming. Mm-hmm. Everybody is just warm. Jamaicans are very, 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 very extroverted about their culture. Like you just say, hey, how are things? And you can just, you can just hit record because they're not going to stop, right? <laughs> um, and we're just, we're, just, we're just very, very warm and welcoming people. Um, I know... You know, myself, you know, so there are two types, in, in my mind, there are two types of people in the world, right? There are those people who you have to work your ass off to gain their trust, right? They don't trust you from the door. Mm-hmm. You have to work your ass off mm-hmm. to gain their trust. But once you do, you're in. Mm-hmm. And then there's people like me. There's people like me who, from the door, I trust you. I love you. I love upon you. I trust you until you give me a reason not to. Ah. Right? You give me a reason not to? Yeah, it's going to be a tough uphill battle. But that's just who I've always been. I'm welcoming. You're coming in. If you're in my space, you're coming in. Let's go. Right? I'm not, I'm not shaking your hand. I'm coming in for a hug. Yep. That's just who I am. Yep. You know? Um, and, and it's funny because, you know, my wife's mother's side of the family is not huggy. They're not that, you know. So... When, we, when, I, when I started meeting them, that was me. I'm coming in for Let's a hug. Go. Come, coming in for a hug. And one of the things that we joke about a lot, you know, I've, I've dated outside of my race you know, a couple times before my wife, but I've always been known as, you know, oh, she's dating this big black guy. Abby's family is German, mm. so they're all big, mm-hmm. right? So with Abby's family, I'm not the big black guy. I'm just the black guy. Right, so you know, I, I come around and I'm coming in. Like, you know, I'm not. Why am I shaking your hand? Your family, get in here. Come get some of this love, love right? Um, and, and that's how I am with, with my members as well. You know, until you tell me, hey, dude, I'm not too comfortable with that, then, you know, I'll respect your space. Uh, but again, the, the truth is, majority of our members are people who are looking at themselves going, 
I don't like where I'm at. Yeah, they need to pick me up, man. I, I don't like me. I don't like where I'm at. I, you know, years ago, I was in a better space. You know, I used to love, my wife used to love, love hugging up on me or my husband used to love, love ah, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the people that you need to go in and go, hey, Come in here. They need the most. Get in here. Yeah. Come get some Fit Body Boot Camp <laughs> love. We're going to get you where you need to be. But it starts here, right? It's, it starts with building that trust. It starts with, with us making people understand we don't see you as an account number. Mm -hmm. We see you as Joe. We see you as, you know, Mrs. Jones. Mm -hmm. That's who you are as to a us. Person, family, yes. community. Yes. Yeah, man. Yes. And and this, I'm going to just go off topic here and, and teach for a second. My friends, being in the gym industry since 2012, this is the reason for this guy's success. I mean, there's many reasons. I hate to simplify it, but the warmness, the connection. We are in the people business first and foremost. And we like to say people come for the results, but they stay for the relationships. They stay for the connections. And this guy and his team have just done it in spades. And um, I just want to reinforce it because that's such a, such a critical point that you, I think you just do exceptionally well. Yeah. And, you know, Truth be told, I, I, I'd be remiss if I took the, all the credit for this. It's, it really isn't me. Um, our integrator, you know, Melissa, I'm going to call her by name because she's awesome. Right? Melissa, give you a little you shout know, out. Yeah, I'm going to call her by name. You know, I, I remember when, we, when she decided, hey, all right, I'm joining. I'm, I'm do, let's do this. Um, and it, again, this was right after the pandemic. So nobody wanted to work because, you know, everybody was getting that extra... Mm -hmm love from the government, yeah, right? Yeah, so nobody yeah. wanted to work. And so the biggest concern that I had was finding a team. Oh, yeah. Right? And she came in day one with three coaches. She was like, I got the team. Let's do this. And so, you know, I sat and interviewed each person. And with each person that I sat with, I was just like, oh, my gosh. We're going to do amazing stuff in here, right? You know, we have this one coach, P, who's just – the most selfless person I've ever met. I, I could sit here and give examples. You know, we, we've had members who've lost a family member. And she's gone in. You know, I've, I've actually had arguments with her because she'll just spend her own money to go get stuff like flowers oh, or bring a meal over to the home or stuff. And I'm like, no, I, talk to us about it. We'll, we'll, we'll finance okay. it. You well, know, well, good on her first and foremost. Yes. That's incredible. Yes. And good on you because yes. it's both of you. It's the relationship. It's the leadership. I mean, it, the culture starts from the top. Yeah. Um, so that's important. That's another uh, yeah. takeaway as well. Uh, Uriel, this has been awesome. We need to schedule a second round of this. <laughs> we absolutely do. Because I only do. have a few more minutes yep, with yes. you left. Um, and I want to ask two final questions. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, this has been absolutely incredible. As we transition... Um, there's someone watching this right now or listening to this and they, they know they need to change. Whatever their low point is, they, they come to that aha, like, wow, I need to you know, be in an environment, a business model where I can impact people, I can make income in the process. Um, you know, Opening a fitness business, potentially even opening a fit body could be something I'm interested in. But for whatever reason, we have that internal critic we were talking about early, that self-doubt we all go through. What would you say to that person? Truth is, if you do nothing, you're going to constantly be in that state. If you do nothing, you're constantly going to be in that state. You know, when I decided to ask my wife to marry me, right, I didn't go around asking people, should I marry this girl? I didn't, ask, I didn't go around going, well, what if, what, if, what if we get divorced? You know, or what if we're not a good fit? Or what if she doesn't want to have kids? You do it. You make the decision because the reason you're having thoughts about this is because you're not happy with where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, if something is not, get up and change it, right? Life doesn't have a remote. You have to get up and change it. And I'm going back to the old school now where we have to get up and flip the TV channel, <laughs> right? You know, get up and make the move. You know, in to interject, I mean, it reminded from your story, you know, mm -hmm. when you like the, the ha moment when you're running with your daughter and you couldn't do it and you're like, you go to the doctor, you're like, I can't do this anymore. Right. Like, I need to change. I don't know exactly what that change is, but I need to change. Yes. And that's the moment we're talking and, about. And that's that moment right there. And in that moment is when you need to make the change. Because guess what? After that moment, because they're going to be fleeting. Those moments are going to be fleeting. So they're going to come every now and again. Totally. Right, and what's going to happen is each time you do not make a move on it, 
is going to come again down the road. Because, you know, again, <laughs> unfortunately or fortunately, I don't even want to look at it. You know, thanks to my aunt, I, I don't, I'm not as frequent to the church anymore, right? But there's this thing, an inner thing called your conscience, right? You can call it God, you can call it spirit, you can, whatever you want to call it. I'm not here to, to you know, discern people's beliefs, but we all have that thing inside of us. And it's going to nag you until you make a move. And the last thing you want to do is have regrets, right? You know, you don't want to be, how many times, and, and again, this is, a good, this is a, good, a good analogy. How many times have you been watching late night TV and you see somebody, you see something being advertised and you're like, oh, snap, I thought about some, doing something like that years ago. And here's somebody making billions off of it, mm -hmm. right? It's the same thing, right? It, it doesn't have to be fit body boot camp. It doesn't have to be fitness, but every time you think about doing something, just know that you're not the only person thinking about it, right? There's 7 billion people in this world. You're not that blessed to be the only person having that thought. No way. But the difference in what we talked about earlier, it's, it's anyone can have the dream or vision. Exactly. The difference is the action. The action behind it. All right, my friend, as we wind this episode down, uh, this show or this podcast is the fitness CEO, and you are certainly a fitness CEO in your own right. So for you, though, Uriel, what, is meaning, what does being a CEO mean to you? You know, most people think CEO and they think, all right, this is a guy or girl that leads. This is the, the, the big poo This is a guy that, or girl that calls the shots. Honestly, I've learned, and not, you know, from both from my, my previous career and, and now, that being a fitness CEO really means finding people who you're going to empower to do the job better than you. And it, it is, is it a big hit to your ego? Yeah, if, if, if you're somebody who doesn't want to let go of your ego, yes. But if you're somebody who wants to be successful, that's what you do. You find the right people to put in the position. It's going to cost you a little bit more, yeah. You know, because I mean, could I be taking home more money if I didn't hire, you know, an integrator and whatever? Yes. But ultimately, I win, right? You can always make money. You can't always make time. And my goal, you know, and again, our goals are all different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not telling everybody to have the same goal that I have. My goal is to buy back my time. And so if it means paying somebody twice as much as I'm paying myself just so I can buy back my time, then so be it. My friend, that is servant leadership at its finest. And uh, man, this has been awesome. Before we wrap today, I just want to thank you, not for being on this show, uh, but for being who you are as a dude. And we even talk about this, like the crazy situation of events, you getting here, having two hours of sleep, not even, you know, getting at 3.30 in the hotel. Yeah. We're shooting this at 6 a.m. live. is just, you know, go, shows your heart, your dedication, your passion. Um, but not only in the fitness industry, just you as a person. Uh, I love your story. I love your immigrant edge story. I have so much love and gratitude for immigrants like you that would just come to our country, work so hard, make it better. And um, I just love how you show up every single day and the service, the value, the energy, Energy, the output that you provide, um, our brand, your family, your clients, and your community. And with that, my friend, I'm so grateful, and I just want to thank you for being on the show, and thank for thank you for being who you are. Thanks, my friend. Thanks for being here. All right, All right my friends. I know you got a ton of value today. Assuming you did, if you could like this video, that would mean a lot. And uh, as we wrap today, I want to remind you that no one is coming to save you. You must save yourself, and the time is now. Thanks again, my friend. Friends, we'll see you in the next episode.